People who have an intellectual disability in their families took part in a rally outside City Hall in North Bay to draw attention to the lack of residential and other government supports. The September 20th demonstration called Nowhere to Turn was organized by Linda Thomas Wallet and her stepson Christopher Wallet. The purpose of the day is twofold. We are rallying to continue in our efforts to raise awareness of the housing and support crisis that uh, we're facing here in North Bay, in our area, and in our province. The second part of the reason we're here is to encourage our community to gather together You've got your movers, your shakers, you've got your municipal government, you've got parents, you've got the faith community. We want everybody to gather together and help solve this crisis. Christopher turned 18 last fall and he and his family were informed that despite being eligible, the wait list for residential supports is at least 10 years long. The family is reluctant to find an apartment for Christopher on their own because he's going to need support in order to do so. He's going to need people in his life to help guide him, to help him take care of the apartment. That wait list is just as long. So our hands are tied. What do we do? Linda knows of one family in North Bay whose loved one has been waiting 17 years. Christopher attends high school, but his stepmom is worried about what will happen when it comes to an end. He qualifies for passport funding, but he has yet to receive it. This funding is to help our young people get into the community, to the adult part of the community. They're not children anymore. They need to be able to access the same things that other adults do in our community. But they need support for this. There are 700 families waiting in our Nipissing area for that passport funding as of May this year. The roughly two dozen people that took part in the rally also heard from Michelle Webster. Her son Max is 11 and her daughter Robin is 16. Both siblings have intellectual disabilities and autism. She talked about her family's experience concerning the lack of appropriate residential placements for people like her daughter who require high levels of support outside of the home. Following a year of transitional planning and ministry funding, Robin was placed in a home specifically for youth until she faced a medical crisis six months later. And at that time, it was decided on behalf of our family that Robin's needs exceeded the one and only residential placement opportunity's ability to support her. And she was just charged to the hospital without a plan as to where she would go next. Webster said her daughter was transferred to multiple hospitals over a two-month period, which were ill-equipped to support Robin. Ultimately, through the advice of other parents, we made the hardest choice we've ever made as parents. We abandoned our child in the hospital. We did this to make her homeless and to force the ministry, the many ministries that were involved's hands into coming up with a solution for our daughter. Through community support, the Webster's own advocacy and with assistance from Community Living North Bay, a therapeutic children's home was recently created in North Bay, a new home for Robin. It is not acceptable to have a system that encourages and forces family into high levels of crisis before providing the basic of human rights. Prior to the rally, Thomas Willett shared that area parents and support organizations will be meeting with the regional director for the Ministry of Community and Social Services North Region. The meeting will take place on October 4th. For Community Living Ontario, I'm Ron LaRoche.